This is Channel 10 St. Thomas. Make your life better. Get in touch with your feelings. Here to help, psychiatrist David Viscott. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Getting in Touch. You know, your feelings that... Bomb ended. Many Americans wanted to put the war behind them. Friends, loved ones were lost. Over a decade later, tour of duty seen on Thursday nights at 9 on Channel 10, brings us back to the battlefield. It's courageous programming like never before. Many who have seen the show have strong opinions about it. It's controversial. It makes us remember. It reaches our hearts. Don't miss Tour of Duty every Thursday night at 9 here on WBMB TV, Channel 10. And now, back. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. This is Channel 10, St. Thomas. Tonight's New Center 10 is brought to you by Unclaimed Freight. Good evening, I'm Yvonne Wright. The National Guard airlifted over $1 million worth of emergency supplies from Puerto Rico to the territory's hospitals today. The hospitals remain in a state of emergency this evening. Lorraine Quinton was on Puerto Rico and brings us this report. Medical supplies worth $1.5 million stockpiled at San Juan, Puerto Rico's airport today as suppliers filled their orders. Disposable products mainly, this time is disposable products for the OR and for the floors, like exam gloves and uh, uh, disposable packs. The supplies are headed to Virgin Island hospitals in St. Thomas and St. Croix. Both hospitals are currently under a state of emergency declared by the governor, a situation created by a critical lack of supplies and services. We put our priorities on medical supplies, that is um, the band-aids, the gauze, the uh, surgical uh, gloves and needles. We've looked at very basic medications and we're looking for small pieces of equipment to come on Saturday and Monday. Health Department Commissioner Dr. Deborah McGregor is overseeing the shipment and says despite the hospital's critical needs, no budget busting is going on. This shipment does not exceed our quarterly allotment. We were able to use existing contracts and competitive arrangements that we had in place before we went out into the marketplace under the emergency order. A Maryland National Guard flight crew under orders from General Robert Moorhead will be shipping the supplies out on a C-130 Air Force cargo plane. 20,000 pounds of the supplies is scheduled to be shipped out tonight, and tomorrow another 10,000 pounds consisting of liquid supplies will be shipped out by barge. In the meantime, Commissioner McGregor says she'll have her State of the Health Department address for New Center 10 tomorrow evening. Reporting from San Juan, Puerto Rico, Lorraine Quinton for New Center 10. Thank you, Lorraine. Students were sent home early today from Charlotte Amalia High School and the Jefferson Annex because the schools ran out of potable water. According to a public spokesman, the schools are scheduled to reopen tomorrow. Trucks are scheduled to bring in the much-needed water tonight. A $5 million out-of-court settlement involving victims of the 1985 typhoid fever outbreak on St. Croix is nearly finalized. At least that's what one source close to the case said today. According to the source, speaking on the condition of anonymity, the settlement is for $5 million and involves approximately 165 people. The remaining stumbling block involves a federal court sanction of payments of some 80 minors involved. The case includes 165 plaintiffs, mostly residents of the Paradise Mills housing project affected by the summer outbreak of typhoid fever in 1985. The case was scheduled to go to trial February 1st. 
The port of San Juan remained closed for the second day in a row today as efforts continue to pull a container vessel off the reef on the edge of the main harbor channel. A Coast Guard spokesman says ships are allowed to pass through the channel under tight supervision for a few hours a day. A team of specialists unloaded some of the fuel from the container ship Long Beach this morning to lighten it and tried to take advantage of the high tide to float it off the bed of coral and sand it got itself trapped in Tuesday night. Still to come, traffic accidents are up and the road report is in. We'll have those stories when we return. To make it into town to the hardware store. Extension cord, hammer, paint, batteries. Extension cord, hammer, paint, batteries. I wish there was a hardware store on the east end. Extension cord, hammer, paint, batteries. Town hardware store. You don't have to rush into town for a complete hardware store. Red Hook Hardware is right in Red Hook Plaza. Extension cord, hammer, paint, batteries, appliances, tools. Claim freight. For all your furniture needs, it's On Claim Freight. On Claim Specializing freight. in quality, selection, and service. On Claim Freight is never on the sold, featuring their everyday low, low prices. Need a new mattress? Then come to Unclaimed Freight. They've got lamps, water beds, bunk beds, sofa beds, love seats, recliners, and much more. Come in and browse, you'll be glad you did. Take advantage of their easy layaway plan. Unclaimed Located Freight. in the Alcorn Mall across from Havenside Shopping Center. Experts say poor road conditions increase the number of traffic accidents, although they are not the sole factor in their occurrence. Statistics show traffic accidents increased by 14% last year on St. Thomas alone, while traffic deaths increased 200%. Fender benders are also on the rise. Police say 5,000 minor accidents were reported last year. According to police records, six automobile accidents have been reported between yesterday and today. According to one study, the average motorist on St. Thomas spends about 15 minutes waiting to get through most major intersections in town. This translates into about 120 hours a year that commuters spend at just one intersection. Today, the Federal Highway Administration released their report on ways to alleviate congestion in Charlotte Amalia. It seemed fitting that while this reporter was on the way to a government house press conference, I was stuck in traffic. Governor Alexander Farrelly, along with Lieutenant Governor Derek Hodge and Delegate Ron DeLugo, revealed the results of a traffic study conducted by the Federal Highway Administration requested by Congress and contained several possible solutions to St. Thomas's traffic problems. There, there is a certain amount of congestion that, that will be around that, that you'll never see the word solved in, in the report. The attempt is to reduce traffic congestion. And we believe that with the recommendations, there, there could be a, in the range of 80 to 90 percent of reduction in, in some of these, uh, in traffic congestion from some of the, from these improvements combined. The program is designed in three stages, calling for traffic engineering actions such as improved signal timing, uh, the widening of intersections, additional turning lanes, and even explored the possibility of staggering working hours for government employees. With respect to staggering, we have a cabinet committee and one department of government is already experimenting, Department of Human Services, followed by the Department of Housing, Parks and Recreation. Also discussed was a road around the Fort Christian complex alleviating traffic flow from east to west and the addition of lanes on the Veterans Drive to the Lover's Lane area. Around to the north of the fort and come back and, and pretty much go on the existing Veterans Drive. Um, westbound traffic would follow on a new uh, uh, additional lanes that were built out into the harbor area, or about 40 to 50 feet, and would provide two to three additional lanes, and that would merge up with the existing lanes between the fort and the legislature. Although no financial study was made to estimate the cost of conducting such projects, Director of Planning from the FHA, Kevin Hinu and Wayne Berman said it would take approximately six years before the project could be completed. Environmental impact on the proposed third lane along Veterans Drive was said to be minimal, and taxi drivers along with other forms of public transportation were to be explored as well. And it's going to be very helpful, I think, to have the expert advice that we should focus on this 
broader than these other ones, and that will allow us to move ahead more quickly. No decision has been made as to what action, if any, will be taking on the suggestions made in the report. However, motorists will probably know the difference when or if that day ever comes. John Carroll for New Center 10. Officials from the Federal Highway Administration will be on Let's Talk this Sunday at 12.30 p.m. to discuss the report. Another jailbreak, this time on Tortola. Police say a man detained at police headquarters on drug and larceny charges escaped Tuesday while being transferred from his cell. Police Commissioner Roland Thompson identified the inmate as Albert Smith of Soldiers Hill. Skies were mostly sunny across the Virgin Islands today. I'll have tomorrow's forecast when we return. More and more people are taking a day trip to St. Thomas. You too can become a day tripper. St. Thomas is only a 30 minute hop by plane from Puerto Rico and there are over 70 flights a day. Your one day trip will typically include airfare, transfers to town for that fabulous shopping, and a tour including stops at well-known St. Thomas attractions. Go on, ask your tour agent. Be a St. Thomas day tripper. The highlight of your day trip will be Coral World Marine Park. St. Thomas is home to this showcase of the Caribbean. The famous underwater tower is the only one in the Western Hemisphere. You will look out windows 15 feet below the surface of the open sea. You'll have plenty of time to see all of the exhibits. Maury eels, incredible stingrays, clouds of flashing fish, plus a great bar and tasty food will round out your day in St. Thomas. And then we'll be back to the airport in your relaxing trip home to Puerto Rico. Go on, be a day tripper. Visit St. Thomas and Coral World. Have you been to Island Block recently? Yeah, it's been completely remodeled. I love their new look. And it's so easy to find the things you need. I had no problem finding plumbing supplies, electrical equipment, hand tools. And the service is fabulous. They helped me find everything I needed to create the new look I want inside and outside my house. My building contractor gets all his supplies from Island Block. They have plenty of everything in stock. It's bigger and better than ever before. It's Island Block. Tonight's New Center 10 weather is brought to you by MD Marine. Well, another beautiful day on St. Thomas, St. Croix, and St. John today. We had a high on St. Thomas of 83, a low of 72. For St. Croix, we had a high of 83, low 74. Barometric pressure for St. Thomas, 3002. For St. Croix, 3000. Absolutely no precipitation or rainfall measured for St. Thomas or St. Croix. For the boaters, winds are east near 10 knots, waves 1 to 3 feet, swells 5 to 7 feet. Partly sunny skies prevailed this afternoon across Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Weather conditions continue to control a high pressure over the Atlantic. If you take a look at our satellite photograph, you can see some of that high pressure area. Although this area is moving slowly eastward, it will provide the re region with a pleasant weather pattern through Saturday. A few brief showers are possible late tonight and early tomorrow morning, but for the most part, partly sunny skies should rule during the daytime. Sea conditions are slowly returning to normal heights. However, at the present time, they are still considered hazardous for maritime activities. A small craft advisory remains in effect tonight. Tonight, partly cloudy skies, 20% chance of showers, low 73, winds 10 to 15 miles per hour coming east Tomorrow, we can expect partly sunny skies, again a 20% chance of showers, high 86, low 73, winds east 10 to 15 miles per hour. When we return, we'll have this week's edition of Entertainment and the Arts. Do you find yourself spending more time figuring out what's on television than actually watching it? Looking for a guide to cut through the broadcast clutter? Today is the TV listings guide that the Virgin Islands have relied upon for accurate television listings for over 15 years. Today goes beyond TV listings. There's movie reviews, dining, sports, shopping, and of course, the horoscope. Today, the Little Yellow Book brings you TV listings and a whole lot more, all for free. Find today and you'll have found the rest of the week.
in your arms for a great big hug. You want to the bone, and it's time to head home. You know it, my son. Home to the clean, crisp taste of an ice cold old Milwaukee. It's the bear Virgin Islanders really go for. The second annual unclaimed cargo sale. Furniture, electronics, office supplies, refrigerators, computers, much, much more. Cheap prices. Saturday and Sunday only, 10 a.m. until at Deliver It. Subbase. Antilles' upcoming fundraising auction hopes to sell a lot of art. And with tickets at $120 apiece, they also plan to raise some much-needed funds. L.J. Torger tells us about the auction on this week's edition of Entertainment and the Arts. Hello, my guest is Mark Marine, headmaster at the Antilles School. Mark, I understand you have your auction coming up on the 30th. Yes, we do, LJ, and we're all gearing up and trying to get uh, all of the items together. This year we've got almost $50,000 worth of merchandise that really? we'll be putting up for auction, including many of these works of art that you see around us here. Beautiful things. People have really donated wonderful gifts. Wonderful things. They include uh, many tangible things like this, right down to things like gifts and services, installation of mirrors and glass for the home, a trip to Maui for two, um, lots of things. And it's an exciting, exciting prospect. All, of course, going to uh, raise funds for the scholarship program, which now exceeds $100,000 a year at the school, and indirectly then goes back to our art program, because uh, that's one of the things we really have concentrated on building up at Antilles School in recent years. What is your, uh, the thrust of your art program now? Well, it varies tremendously, but we take the students right from the Early Learning Center at age three, where they begin with art classes taught by a specialist in that field, not the classroom teacher, and branches out by the time they're into the high school where they're taking photography, painting, drawing, printmaking, enameling, um, ceramics, sculpture, um, a variety of different specializations. So it covers the whole gamut, basically. Well, how do, how do we get tickets for the auction? Or how well, the auction tickets are on sale right now at the Antilles School. You can call 41966 for information or for the tickets to be sent to you. They cost $125 a piece, which I know sounds a bit steep, but uh, $25 of that goes immediately towards your first purchase oh, at the auction great. itself. And I can assure that the dinner that you will receive that night is wonderful. Uh, Gourmet experience. Where is the dinner? At the Stouffer Grand Beach Hotel. That will be great. That's well, we'll all look forward to that. That's on the 30th, Antilles School Auction, L.J. Torger, New Center 10, for Entertainment and the Arts. Thank you, L.J. Well, Kenny, we've already had some stories about some Virgin Islanders who are going to the Winter Olympics, but I understand you've got some more Olympians for us tonight. Indeed we do. His name is Peter Holmberg, and he's a world-class, fin-class sailor. One man, one boat. Well, we look forward to hearing that story. We'll be back with that and more sports when we return. American made with care and precision, a durable finish, ball bearing glides, doors and drawers that work. It's functional, flexible, available, affordable. Put all your belongings, those to be seen and those to be hidden away, in TechLine. Enjoy the simple elegance of well-designed furniture at a reasonable price. Available at Interdecor, Buccaneer Mall, St. Thomas. Yeah, sure goes great with the national pastime. Strohs, fire brewed for smooth, consistent taste. Now you're talking beer. A good time's better with a good time beer. And Strohs is smoking here. There's so much waiting out there. Blue skies, rainbows, and lots of fresh air. So when you gotta get away, Get up, up, and away with Air Center Helicopters. Air Center provides breathtaking scenic island tours, transportation adventures, and aerial photography excursions. Call us at 57335. Get away with Air Center. Good evening, sports fans. I'm Kenny Mack, and this is New Center 10 Sports. Well, to begin, 
the Washington Redskins are bubbling with happiness, knowing that one of their formerly injured premier receivers is expected to play in the Super Bowl. Art Monk is back, and Doug Williams has a smile that stretches across the Potomac. Two weeks to go, and um, it's feeling pretty good now. Maybe just, I'm starting to run and everything now, so hopefully this week I'll start maybe practicing with the team. I can't imagine how hard it would be for you to, to sit out another Super Bowl. It's happened. This would be the second time for you if it happened. It would have been the second time, or you know, if I don't play this time, it would be the second time. But I'm prepared for it. I prepared myself a lot better this time than I did last time. So whatever happens, uh, I'm ready for it. You don't get sick when you know Art Mark coming back. I mean, it heals all wounds that you might have had knowing that you got Art Mark, Ricky Sanders, and Gary Clark uh, coming back. So it's a great feeling. Well, Tom Flores will no longer be the head coach for the Los Angeles Raiders. At a press conference yesterday, uh, Coach Flores said he was not asked to resign and he was not suffering from burnout. Here's more of what he had to say. I made the decision over the weekend. Uh, I talked to Al Monday morning, and we decided we decided let's let's do it, and uh, we wanted to make it a happy a happy occasion because it is. I'm not to, you know, it's not like I'm uh, going off to Siberia or something. I'm just moving over and letting somebody else wear the hat. Tomorrow night in Atlantic City, New Jersey, the young meets the old, the strong challenges the savvy and as some might say, the smart against the not so smart. Mike Tyson, who weighed in at 215 and three quarter pounds, is undefeated with a record of 32 wins, no losses, and 28 knockouts. Larry Holmes is a polished 225 and three quarter pounds and is an eight to one underdog. Now, if history repeats itself, 75% of the time when a former heavyweight champ comes back to regain the title, he loses. We'll just have to see. Peter Holberg is a native Virgin Islander who is mounting a full-scale campaign to bring back the gold in 1988, in the 1988 Olympics. Peter is presently ranked fifth in the world in the Finn class of sailing, which is up from the 11th ranking he had in the 1984 Olympics. In Caribbean competition, he is the best as he was the winner of the 1986 Caribbean Dinghy Championship and the Rolex Cup Regatta in 1987. I had a chance to talk with Peter, the island's best single-handed sailor, and this is how it went. Peter, for coming to the New Center 10 Sports uh, booth and uh, allowing us to give you an opportunity to tell us about the sport of sailing that you're involved in. Presently, I'm involved in a campaign for the Olympics in 88 in Korea. And I've got about eight months left. It happens in September. So wrapped up right now, just training and keeping in shape. I understand, too, that this is single-handed sailing. Can you explain or elaborate a little? OK, there's several classes in the Olympics. My class involves one man, one small boat, more of a test of physical endurance and an individual's competence as opposed to a boat and the size of the yacht and so forth. Now, are uh, you going to compete in Seoul, Korea? Well, the island is actually held in Pusan. It's a big port, second largest city in Korea. It's about 200 miles south of Seoul. And uh, now, who helps you cover these expenses? Uh, is it uh, a group that's sponsoring you or something? Uh, it's my back pocket. I have to, at present, I'm doing all my own fundraising. The expenses I have to incur myself. I raise them some by going to the community and asking people for support and the rest from working and saving everything I can. Well, tell us a little bit about this single-handed competition that you'll be involved in with the other nations of the world. Okay, the boat I sail is called a fin. It's the only single-handed boat in the Olympics. It's 15 feet long. It's a very good test of physical endurance and tactical skill and sailing ability. Uh, they consider it the premier single-handed boat in the world. It's an excellent boat. It seems to test every skill in sailing there is, you know. I remember we talked a little earlier about uh, their, each competition is four hours long. A race, the weather legs are about a mile to a mile and a half, and so your total course is about eight, nine miles. And we'll have seven races in the Olympics, 
and each race is about three or four hours long. And um, we also talked a little bit earlier about um, the fact that there is no competition for you here on the islands, so you have to go to the mainland to compete uh, to see how you, how well you're doing. How how is that done? Well, it's pretty. It's it's a bad thing because we've got our best sailing conditions in the world down here, yet I have no competition. I can uh, use an example of training for a tennis competition against a backboard without some competition to go against and see how you're doing. So yes, I travel regularly to the States to go up against the best up there. Well, if you had one thing to tell the sports public, what would it be uh, about some of the things that uh, you would like to see done? I am a little discouraged by the lack of support from the community in general for our athletes down here. Not just sailing, but also the taekwondos and the boxers and so forth. We need to have a little more pride in our athletes here, support them. They're an example for the kids, and it's representing the Virgin Islands around the world. It's some of the best advertising you could ask for, in a sense. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And finally, the St. Thomas St. John Racing Commission will hold its first meeting of 1988. That meeting is going on Saturday, January 23rd at 10 a.m. in the VI Lottery office. The commission will discuss progress on the plans to cover the stands at Clinton Phipps, progress on the new rules and regulations, and the licensing of owners, trainers, and jockeys. For New Center 10 Sports, I'm Kenny Mack. Thank you, Kenny. We'll be right back with more news in a moment. Go where to beach, where to shop, where to be, where to advertise the best guide to the Virgin Islands. Where? Everywhere. Every month. Where Virgin Islands Magazine. Last week, News Center 10 reported on a Virgin Islander who won $16 million in the New York lottery. This lucky man has decided how he's going to spend at least a portion of that money. The 54-year-old Cruzian held a press conference in New York City. 54-year-old Roland Roberts is the recipient of the third largest individual lottery award in New York's history. Although Roberts now lives in the Bronx, he was born and raised on St. Croix, where he is retired from the Hess Oil Company. Roberts chose the winning combination by using the ages of some of his seven children, who range in age from 24 to 34. When Roberts stepped up to claim his award last week, he said he would wait until he received his first check before deciding how to spend it. Well, didn't take Roberts long to realize the cash was coming, and he says he's decided how to spend at least a portion of his earnings. Um, the year is um, 32. Well, I'm thinking about first thing to get a nice home. Where, where would you like to do that here? Well, I don't know as yet. But I know you're going to be into United States. The State Department announced in Washington it has lodged a strong protest with the government of Haiti over the arrest of opposition political leader and former presidential candidate Louis de Joie. Spokesperson Charles Redmond called de Joie's arrest unwarranted and said the United States Embassy has asked Haitian authorities to release him immediately. De Joie is one of four opposition leaders who boycotted Sunday's national election. He was arrested Wednesday as he got off his flight from Puerto Rico where he has a home. De Joie was charged with inciting public disorder and returned to jail today. And that's all the time we have for News Center 10 tonight. Thank you for watching us. Stay tuned for the CBS Evening News with Ann Rather. Good night. Tonight's News Center 10 was brought to you by Unclaimed Freight. Heartbeat of the Virgin Islands is yours on WSTA 1340 AM Stereo. 
No satellite dish for us. We're live and playing music for you. Programmed by us right in your own backyard. For 37 years, we've been your local station, covering local news, sports, and giving all Virgin Islanders live local coverage. Keep the beat with the heartbeat of the Virgin Islands. WSTA 1340 on your AM dial in stereo. Four times more powerful. Turn to when something goes wrong. Who's got the right part to keep your car running strong? Who's got the service that doesn't take long? It's a car care center. Hometown pros taking care of your car. SO knows what it takes to go far. SO car Everett announces its second annual unclaimed cargo sale. Furniture, electronics, office supplies, refrigerators, computers, much, much more. Cheap prices. Saturday and Sunday only 10 a.m. until at Deliver It. Sub base. This is WBNB TV Channel 10 St. Thomas. Broadcasting throughout all the islands, including Fajardo and Beef Island.